Hey, fantastic friends. Welcome to another Jerry B. Berry reading wrap up. Um, I have to find my camera again because I'm using, oh, there it is. I got you. Okay. So, sorry, I forgot to close my door all the way. It gets kind of loud out there, but it's another Jerry B. Berry reading wrap up. And um, tonight's episode is sponsored by the letter W for wine. So it's the holidays and I've been really into my um, shied wine. Shout out to them. Boom. It's my favorite wine. I'm a member. Ooh. Okay. So anyways, I'm drinking it out of a mason jar because <laughs> that's how I drink wine. Anywho, we're going to do my November reading wrap up and I'm very excited about it. I read like a lot of books this November. So to like back up, because I, I know that it's been a while since I did reading wrap ups. I did like a, like, um, a summer one and then I did like a September and, a, and an October. But anyways, just to catch you up all the way to the beginning of the year, if you remember ever hearing me say that my goal was 121 books for the year of 2022. And that is because I, I read an article that said that the average American watches two hours of television a day. If that two hours was spent reading, the average American would be able to read 121 books in a year. So that was my goal. My very, very, very first goal, like back in December of 2021, was to read 52 books. I quickly came up onto 52 books, um, and that's whenever I changed it to that 121. So as of today, I am at 110 books. Hang on. Let me see. Yes, I'm at 110 books. Um, but for November, I was at 109 because I finished a book today. So for Nove for the end of November, today's December 1st, by the way. You're going to be watching this on December 2nd. So I did read quite a bit. I will have all of my reading stats down in the description below. I don't know it off the top of my head. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I read 18 books this month. I think that might be a record. I'll have to double check, but I think that's the most I've ever read in a month. But some of these were short, to be fair. A lot of these were short. So let's get started. Um, like I said, I'll have like my, my brief stats down in the description. Um, yeah, I always like to tell people to support your local libraries. That's what I do. Um, 99% of the books that I read throughout the year are from a library, whether it's the Libby app or the Hoopla app for audiobooks from my local library. But I also read like physical books. Um, I don't think I read any physical books this month. But last month I did read a few physicals. So anyways, with the holidays, it's been really, really hard to sit down and like enjoy a physical book. So that's why. So let's get started because it's a long list. I finished the series of unfortunate event books. So that is books five through 13 are the first books I read this month. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books. The first nine books are the series of unfortunate event books that I read. Um, I'll link my previous reading wrap ups, but I read the first four way back in like June, I wanna say, June or July. It was before I got stuck on Harry Potter. I read the first four series of unfortunate events. Um, I gave the whole series five stars except for the last two books. I wasn't really happy with the way this book ended. Um, I feel like the buildup was, was, was big and then you get to the end and it wasn't that great. Like, I don't know. I just felt like we should have gotten to, uh, this isn't good English. I apologize. I feel like we should have like seen their parents uh, or learned more about their parents. I, I hated like, I don't know. I hate, yeah. I hated that we didn't learn more about the Snicket family really. Um, we didn't really get closure. I don't know. It all just seemed to be rushed and like 
not as good as I wanted it to be. It felt like the show got canceled and they had to hurry up and rush the last season. That's how I felt the last two books were. So I gave them four stars. Um, but every other book I gave five. I must say like one of my favorites, I think whenever I really started liking it was around like the Vile Village. The Vile Village were, was where it started getting like a lot darker in a sense. Like this is definitely middle grade level books. Like it's meant by middle grade, I mean it's meant for ages probably like eight and up. I think whenever I first started reading this, I was in third grade, which is about eight or nine years old. I remember reading like the first book whenever I was in like third grade ish, maybe something like that. So anyways, um, it was definitely elementary school. So that's what I mean by middle grade is like that elementary level, um, to where Harry Potter is like a YA where it starts in middle school, preteen, early teen. Anyways, so, um, for, um, for middle grade books, I felt like around the Vile Village and like the car the carnivorous carnival it started getting a lot darker and then I liked it a little bit more because it became less certain it wasn't certain that they were going to be okay by the end and make it out okay like people started getting split up from other people um there's some love interests going on that's like talked about but not talk about because it's like middle grade so I liked it a lot better whenever I think my favorites was like the vile village all the way until the Grim Grotto. And then after the Grim Grotto, I was like, meh, the ending wasn't where I wanted it to be. So I don't want to go on like a long, long discussion about this, but um, I did watch the Netflix series years ago whenever it first came out. What was that, like 2015 maybe, 2016? Probably 2016, whenever the series came out on Netflix. I watched it, I love it. Um, I think the series was really good. I actually kind of liked the series better because they showed some of the adult background stuff that was happening. I feel like the TV series gave us more closure than the books did. Um, and then I think I said this before in my last reading wrap up where I talked about the first four books that I read. Like, I remember going to see the movie in theaters, like the, the movie with Jim Carrey where it covered the first three books. And so like to me, Jim Carrey like as Olaf just lives rent free in my head like <laughs> I know that movie wasn't that great compared to the books but um yeah I don't know why I just think Jim Carrey as Count Olaf was like the best thing ever <laughs> so that's that I appreciate that the happiest little elf did actually exist in the books because I was starting to worry that maybe the movies just made that up but it does exist in the books so anywho after the series of unfortunate events I was kind of like lost as to what to read I wasn't quite sure like November I feel like was too early to get into to Christmas stuff but like too late for mysteries I was kind of mysteried out and suspensed out by this time because I had read so many like horror thriller suspense mystery novels in October so I just went through like the library app of like popular stuff or like recommended for you stuff on my apps. And I came across the book Eve. It's a YA dystopian novel. And apparently it's a series. I think there's like three in the series. I did not like the first one enough to even think about reading the last two. But I think most of my problem with this book is that I'm not a YA age person why ya aged person so ya is young adult it's usually meant for people from like anywhere f i think ya technically goes from like 12 to 19 basically so maybe even early 20s sometimes maybe but usually young adult means teen like strictly 13 to 19. um so this was definitely a ya novel to be honest with you, I finished it on the 15th and of November and I can't even really remember it enough. I gave it three stars. Um, I kept wishing I was reading The Gracier instead. The Gracier is a YA dystopian um, heavily influenced by The Handmaid's Tale 
Eve was similar. You could tell that it was like influenced by The Handmaid's Tale. Um, I think both of them even had quotes from The Handmaid's Tale in the dedication or in like the very beginning of the book. But basically with Eve, all the girls go to school with, with like girls only, all the boys go to a school that's for boys only, and um, they think that after they finish school they get to go on to do their trades or their college or whatnot for the king of sand I think is what they call him, and it's just going to be a, a wonderful life once they finish school, and then they Eve and another girl finds out that it's not all fields of roses afterwards, that they're actually just be going to become breeding factories. And um, she runs away and she tries to make it to Calafia, which is supposed to be like a promised land for women. Um, so that's the basics of it. I didn't think it was that great. I don't know. Like I said, I it wasn't horrible. I finished it. I gave it three stars. I think if I was a teen, I would have appreciated it more because I remember being closer to that age and reading the Matched series, which was like Matched. I can't even remember what the three books were called for Matched, but I remember reading that series on an ebook and me and my sister really, really loving it. So I think if I was that age again, I would appreciate this. But in my adult opinion, as a 30 year old woman, I think that if you like the Handmaid's Tale vibe, The Grace Year is much better. I'll get off that soapbox. All right, next I read The Guest List. The Guest List has been on my list, no pun intended, for quite some time because I love RBC, aka Reese's Book Club from Reese Witherspoon, and The Guest List is a book on that list. So um, I listened to it. It was okay. I gave it three stars. Again, it was like, eh. Was it the best? No. Was it the worst? No. I think Leanne, Leanne Moriarty is one of my all-time favorite authors. I've read every single one of her books. Every single one. If you're new to the channel, then you, now you know. If you uh, have seen my videos before, then you should probably know that she's my favorite author. Um, and her vibe is the same as this book. I don't know if the author Lucy Foley writes every book like this but it's like a suspenseful romance-esque vibe like a mystery romance combined so that's like Leanne Moriarty's specialty is like there's romance there's families but there's like something bad going on in the background you have to figure out what it is that's how every Leanne Moriarty novel is and I for whatever reason I just love her and I love her writing so I think if I had not read Big Little Lies then I probably would have loved the guest list. But since I read Big Little Lies, the whole time I was listening to the audiobook, I was like, oh, it's basically Big Little Lies. <laughs> and like, it just wasn't that great to me because of that. So, um, I'm reading my Goodreads review to remind me, but none of the characters are likable. I did not connect with a single character and I did not like a single character. Um, it's basically like a wedding that happens on an island and every single person is like doing horrible things and making horrible decisions. There was like one cool character in my opinion and I can't even remember her name for the life of me but she was like the plus one. Whatever her name was it was like name the plus one and it was because her husband was best friends with the bride so he was like a groomsman or like a bridesman or something like that. But her, I loved her character the most, and she was just the plus one. She didn't even get, like, her just desserts. But it's one of those books where it's, like, everyone's connected somehow, and you pull all the pieces together at the end. And it was just, like, very predictable, and, like, ugh, I don't know. It was okay. I give it three stars. I think if you are new to this type of novel, you'll probably like it. To me, it just felt very predictable, and... Like I said, I just kept wishing I was listening to the big, <laughs> to like a Leanne Moriarty novel. Like I kept wishing it was Big Little Lies. I just thought the writing was better in Leanne Moriarty books. But anywho, guest list, three stars. Um, I, before we get into the next couple of books, I am a huge sucker for romance novels. People judge me for it all the time. 
So I, it's okay. I know that you're judging me and I'm okay with it. But let me explain. So it's the same as like a Disney movie or a Pixar movie, right? If you're going to the theater or you're putting that Pixar movie on at your house and you've never seen it, it's the first time, like, you know going in that it's going to be okay. You know whenever you press play on that Disney slash Pixar film or rom-com in general that it's going to be okay. The ending will be happy. Everybody's going to make it. It's all going to be fine. So that's why I love romance novels. I love rom-com novels. I love them. I love putting them on and getting lost in this person's world as they fall in love and feel all the awesome feelings. And no matter how turbulent the ride gets in this rom-com or romance novel, I know that the ride's going to end at a happy place, right? So that's why, that's why I love them. Anywho, so what had happened was I again, was just like looking through my library app, scrolling through, and a book called Life's Too Short came up that was recommended for me. And then I found out that Life's Too Short is in a series of romance novels. So it's one of those that you don't have to read in order, but I wanted to read it in order because I'm kind of anal about that stuff. I keep burping, I'm so sorry. So anyways, that's how I got suckered into this set of books. But I read The Friend Zone, The Happy Ever Ever, The Happy Ever After Playlist, Life's Too Short and Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. I'm like a full-fledged Abby Jimenez fan now and I can't stop reading all of her books. She has another book coming out in April of 2023 or it's expected to come out in April of 2023 and I'm already excited for it. It's already on my list of stuff to read because as far as romance novel goes, I think they're great. So they're considered a series because the characters in the books connect in some small way, some bigger than others, but it's one of those like he's not, he's just not that into you or like Valentine's Day vibes where people are just kind of connected and you know this person from that person and that kind of deal. So, and I think her books get better as they go on. So the first book is The Friend Zone and I gave it four stars. A cliche romance book. Um, the girl's in a relationship. Uh, the guy that pisses her off in a car accident ends up being somebody that she knows through a friend. And uh, they would never work because she can't have kids and he wants kids. Super cliche, right? But I gave it four stars because it was good. It was entertaining. It, it held me the whole time. And as I was reading it, I was like, oh, okay, the secondary character Sloan is like my favorite. I'm obsessed with Sloan. And then for the second book, the Happy Ever Ever the Happy Ever After playlist is about Sloan. So now we get to know more about Sloan's life. And it takes place about I think it's like a year or two after the first book. Now we're it's a def, it's definitely one year. So a year after the first book, now we're hearing about Sloan's life. Sloan is a widow. And she's, uh, she meets a guy because she finds his dog. His dog is, was lost and she finds, she finds it. And then she's calling the number on the collar and it's a guy. And so I gave the Happy Ever After playlist four stars. My favorite thing about the Happy Ever After playlist is that every chapter is titled by a song. And that song like captivates the chapter. And so I love it. And ever since I read this book... Electric Love by Borns has been living rent-free in my head. I listen to it probably once a day because <laughs> it's such a banger. <laughs> um, but that was the title of one of the songs. Um, this Charming Man by The Smiths was another title to a chapter. Uh, there are some really good ones in there. Uh, Name by The Goo Goo Dolls was another chapter. So that was my favorite part of the Happy Ever After playlist. The Happy Ever After playlist gave me... Um, a Star is Born vibes, like the newest A Star is Born with Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Because um, it is about like a famous guy and his name is Jackson Waters. And then A Star is Born, his name is Jackson Maine, right? So it's like, it gave me those vibes, but I liked it. It was cute. So then I finally got to Life's Too Short, which originally started me on this venture. And I think Life's Too Short was the best one. I laughed so much. Like I laughed out loud so many times while listening to like life's too short. So I gave that one five stars. Life's too short is more 
loosely connected um, to the first two. It's like a character's cousin. So Josh from, sorry, let me make sure I get this straight. I had to draw a character map for these books. Josh from the friend zone. He has a cousin named Adrian. Adrian goes on one date with Sloane from the Happy Ever After playlist. Life's Too Short is about Adrian after all of this stuff. So this is like now three years past the first one or something like that. So now we get to hear about Adrian's life, which again, he was loosely connected. And Life's Too Short is about how Adrian falls for his neighbor. And his neighbor is a woman with ALS. And um, she's like a YouTube content creator. And she definitely boasts about ALS research. So that was another thing I loved about all of these books by Abby Jimenez is they all had this important message to send about these issues that people probably don't talk enough about like infertility in the first book and being a widow in the second book and then in the third book you have these terminal illnesses like ALS. Um, so yeah I thought Life's Too Short was very very funny. I think it was Probably out of the four, it was my favorite. Yeah, I think it was my favorite. So I don't want to give too much away because I think Life's Too Short is the best. And to be clear, like you don't really have to read the previous ones to know what's going on. Like I could have just read Life's Too Short and been fine. Um, but it's kind of nice to know whenever they reference these other people, like you, you know their backstory already. So that's like the bonus to it. So anyways, Part of Your World is the fourth one in the series. This one is even looser based. So the way that this one is connected is like very loosely based where I'm trying to remember how it all connects. So the main characters in Part of Your World is Daniel and Alexis. And Alexis's brother marries a character that was in the Happy Ever After playlist. And then Alexis falls for Daniel and part of your world. And Daniel is cousins with Josh from the friend zone. So it's a uh, very loosely based. We don't really hear a lot about the characters from the first three books, but it is mentioned of how they're connected. Also, Adrian had gone out with Alexis one time. Adrian gets around, apparently, before he meets the love of his life and life's too short. So, <laughs> anyways. Um, Part of Your World was another one where it was, like, super funny. It was, like, one woman is from a very fancy, well-renowned doctor family. And the guy is from, like, a podunk one-horse town that only has, like, a hundred and some people that live there. And they meet. And they're falling in love, but their worlds don't mesh. Very classic romance trope. He has a baby goat. It's super cute. He has a weird deaf dog. It's just like, I thought it was really good. It was a really cute one. But again, I think Life's Too Short was my favorite. Um, I gave Part of Your World five stars as well because it was so funny. Um, I love, I think I just loved being in Abby Jimenez's like world like rom-com world that she made up where you get to like connect all the dots and like learn how everyone's connected so yeah after that I read One Italian Summer um One Italian Summer is by Rebecca Searle I think I'm saying that right I read the book in five years by her I read in five years like in September and in five years I thought was really really good one Italian Summer wasn't my favorite. I gave it four stars. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't my favorite. The narrator is Lorelai from the Gilmore Girls. So that was interesting. But One Italian Summer is about a woman who loses her mother. And her mother is like the world to her. Like her best friend. And after her mother dies, she starts to question everything. Like her life, her marriage, all the things. And she goes to Italy because her and her mother were supposed to go to Italy. And then her mother dies, so she goes to Italy by herself. And um, she learns a lot about her mother's past while she's there. So it was kind of sad. It was kind of like 
triggering in some ways with mother-daughter relationships and like loss and whatnot but it wasn't horrible it wasn't my favorite so I gave it four stars um I did have a friend mention that they didn't like in five years I feel like if you don't like one you're not gonna like the other the writing was very much the same like I could tell it was the same author while I was listening to it the vibe is very much the same so if you don't like in five years you're not gonna like this one if you didn't like one Italian summer you're probably not gonna like in five years but in five years was better in my humble opinion. Okay, so now we're on to the last two. I'm sorry this is taking so long. So I then read In a Holidays. In a Holidays it was technically on my December to be read, my December TBR list, but the hold became available at my local library. So I decided to hurry up and read it. And it was better than I expected. I've never really read cliche Christmas books before. I read One Day in December last year in December, so December 2021. And that was the first time I really read like a Christmas or winter specific book. But In a Holidays was good. I gave In a Holidays four stars. Again, classic romance novel. Um, this one is set with like a, a Groundhog's Day vibe. That's the most common thing you read about it. So it's the whole trope of um, the main character, uh, makes a wish and she wishes that she could see what would make her happy. And she keeps reliving this vacation that happens from the 20th to the 25th with her, with her like parents, friends. So her parents, college friends become more like family where they do all the things together, all the holidays together. And they all meet up at this cabin for holidays throughout their whole lives and now she's like in her mid 20s and she's she keeps reliving this Christmas vacation until things go the way they're meant to go so it was cute I thought it was funny um I enjoyed it it was I think the writing is really good I would like to read more by Christina Lauren the author because I do think the writing was was well done in my opinion um I think Holidays is a really good, like, snuggle up on the couch and read a Christmas book because it is shorter. I think it's only like a six hour long audiobook. So it's only like 200 some pages. So for avid readers, it is like a nice one to just like cuddle up on a Saturday or a Sunday with your coffee or your tea and your blanket and like binge read it. <sighs> Last but not least. Sorry, I'm preparing myself. Last but not least, for November, I read It Ends With Us. And I have so many thoughts. I have seen this book literally everywhere. I have seen it on TikTok. I've seen it on Instagram Reels. I've seen it on Facebook Reels. I've seen it in Instagram Stories. I've seen it advertised on my library app like a million times. I've seen it advertised on Goodreads like a million times. And I keep hearing about Colleen Hoover. And I keep hearing about this book. And I guess I kind of see the, the hype, but at the same time, I don't. So I have a very complex relationship with this book. I gave it five stars. I did. And this book has very many varying reviews where people either love it or hate it. The people that hate it, I understand why they hate it. There's a lot of trigger warnings with this book with like death and domestic violence and things like that. I went into this book knowing nothing about it. I had seen it advertised everywhere and seen so many people recommend it, but I didn't know anything. I didn't know the plot. I didn't know the main characters' names. I knew nothing. And I'm, I usually don't give in to like the book talk books, but it became available and I was like, what else am I going to read? I don't want to keep reading Christmas books yet. So I'll just read it. I gave it five stars because I binge read it. The audiobook was like 11 hours long and I could not stop listening to it. And I finished it in one day. I just did nothing but listen to this book. <laughs> like, literally. <laughs> so that's why I gave it five stars. I feel like if a book captivates me so much that I literally cannot press pause or put it down, it deserves five stars. I almost gave it three or four. Whenever the book first starts out, 
I'm like, eh. I was already kind of like, eh, because she, the main character talks about being on a roof with a guy that's smoking a joint and she hates whenever people smoke weed in public. And as an avid plant medicine user, I was like, ew, why are you so hateful? <laughs> um, but then it caught my attention and I feel like it was predictable. I feel like as a romance novel lover, it was very predictable. Very, very, very predictable. Like, nothing shocked me. Yeah, nothing sh I don't think anything that happened in this book was like a gasping moment. I was like, oh, saw that from a mile away. So I think the people that rave about this book probably do not read a lot, a lot. Or are probably new to this style of writing. And that is not a judgment in any way whatsoever. I am so happy for anybody that reads anything ever. And I'm so happy that you're getting into reading. And I love that something like this can get you into reading. But I think as a person that reads a lot, it just became so predictable. And it felt so like, so lifetime movie, right? Like so overly dramatic for no reason. But for some reason I loved it and couldn't stop listening to it. <laughs> Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I think there were like nitpicky things where she was like, oh, it's been six months since the day I saw this guy. And then out of the, you know, out of the blue, oh, who knew I would run into him? She runs into him and she's like, oh, what has it been like six months? Like, bro, you just said it was six months. Like, two sentences ago we know it's been six months so it was kind of repetitive with things like that um a lot of people hated the letters that or the journal that she reads that is her journal whenever she was a teenager I kind of liked that I'm kind of a sucker for whenever people are like reading letters or journals and books so I did like that aspect um a lot of people thought it was weird that she was writing to Ellen DeGeneres, but I, again, liked that part. I liked that she was writing to Ellen DeGeneres. I've, I've heard of that in books before, and I've appreciated it. And as a person that's gone to therapy, I do know that those um, techniques are common in therapy, where it says that you're going to like write a letter to somebody, and that's how you get your feelings out and get closure. So I did actually appreciate that part. Um... And I did appreciate listening to it. I don't think that the transitions were executed very well. Transitions from like present time to her reading the journal. It felt kind of ram random and forced at times. I hated that a random gay best friend was brought into the book for one event. And then like never mentioned again until the very end where it's like, oh yeah, that gay friend was there too. It, that felt very weird. Um, I hate how rushed the relationship was in general. For an 11 hour book, I thought it would be less rushed and more detailed, maybe a slower paced. Their relationship would take over more time. Um, yeah, I do appreciate the light that it brought to the subject of abuse and domestic violence and different types of abuse but it was also triggering to listen to um and it was also like I saw it happening from a mile away and I think that comes from like life experience and just like reading experience where I was like it was almost like watching a horror film where I was like why are you going into the room full of chainsaws you're an idiot like clearly I know where this is leading um, please stop because we can all see where it's going. We're watching the train wreck happen right now. So, yeah. I have a lot of thoughts about this book. Um, but I gave it five stars because I just could not stop listening to it. I could not stop listening to it. <sighs> yeah. I think that's where I'll end with that. I could probably talk about it forever and ever and ever. If you've read it and you want to discuss it, please reach out. I would love to share ideas. Again, I do not mean to offend anybody if they do not agree with my reviews. So I am always happy to like discuss and hear people's thoughts and opinions. 
Um, yeah. Again, all of the stats for the books that I've read will be in the description. Um, next month, I'm doing a Jerry, Jerry B. Mary series where I post um, 12 days in a row. There will be giveaways, so make sure you like stay on top of it and keep your eye out for that. I'll also be doing like an end of the year book stats, like for the whole year. Hopefully I make it to my goal. As of today on December 1st, you're watching this on December 2nd, but as of December 1st, I am at like 110, I'm basically at 111 books. I have like 10 minutes left of an audiobook right now. So I'll be at 111 by the end of the night. So I have 10 more books to read before the end of the year. And I'm pretty sure I can pull it off. I'm pretty sure. Um, so yeah, yay me. I can't wait to talk to you guys next week. I hope you enjoyed this. If you want to talk about books, comment below, message me on Instagram. You know the deal. Support your local libraries. Um, yeah. All right. Love you. Bye.